Welcome back to the Warren Valentine Show, heard coast to coast and border to border, giving the truth fighters a voice in the call for justice. Here with Nevesir. Nevesir. No one on the corner has swagger like us. Swagger like us. Swagger like us. All right, Truth Fighters. 888-669-2281. Number to call. 888-669-2281. Number to call. You want to weigh in on what we're talking about, what we're dealing with. Let's go to Cedric in Detroit, line one. What's up, Cedric? How you doing, Warren? You got it, brother. Um, You know, Warren, I hear you speaking a lot about what's happening to us, right? Mm-hmm. And do you ever talk about what we do to ourselves? And I'm not trying to come on you about that. I'm just asking how much of how much of what's happening to us can we help by stop by us stopping and hurting ourselves? Well, I, when I talk about that, I talk about it from this sense. We can change what's going on. I, I, in fact, I did a whole show last week saying that, look, I, I'm not even talking about racism again because there's no need to talk about it. Because the only way we're going to change what's going on is if we change ourselves first. So we can talk about racism all we want to, but that ain't going to fix nothing until we fix what's going on with us first. Once we fix what's going on with us first, then everything else will kind of fall into place. So, right, so I talk I about it. So I, was on, I talk about it from that position. So I was on Facebook talking to some. Okay, so I was on Facebook talking to some, a lot of black people about um, racism, and it, it was a brother on there talking about how we need to come together. All these white people out here gathering guns for us. I said, brother, the, the way we come together is if we show love amongst each other first. And once we start to care about each other, there's no way nobody would, will devalue us and think of us as being lesser than them. They wouldn't do it because we would care about each other. Our communities would be clean. We wouldn't have trash all over the place. We wouldn't have broken down homes. We wouldn't have our kids fighting in the streets and fighting at school. We need to wake up as a people, period. Yeah, I mean, we, we have to understand that in order to change what we got going on in our community, it's not going to come from the government. It's not going to come from a church. It's going to come from us as a people. And you're right. We have to learn how to love, but see, this is the thing about the love thing, right? Because the reality of it is, is it's some people that don't even love themselves. And if you don't love yourself, you don't even know how to love somebody else. But what we have to do is we, we have to show people that it's okay to love because there's some people that's afraid they're afraid to do it that's because right. they've been they've been conditioned right. and, and and beaten down and and tore down and and so they, they're afraid to even let themselves get to that point so you got to show them that it's okay to do it and then you also got to show that by doing this and collectively coming together we're actually getting more accomplished than if we're doing it by ourselves but and also, so, let me add this to it as well, Juan. Let me add this to it real quick as well. I asked the brother on Facebook, I said, okay, so what's the solution to all of our troubles? And I said, are you going up and down your own block in your own community and talking to all your neighbors? You know what he did? He just pushed the like button and never responded, and nobody else that was in that page responded at all. See, it's one thing to get up on there talking about we need to come together and do this, but if you ain't going out and talking to your own people and speaking and saying hello to your people in your community, you're not doing nothing but talking on Facebook. Yeah, but, you know, you got to understand. Understand this, brother. And, see, I I hear the passion in your voice because you love us and you want us to do better. I hear that. But you got to understand that. It's so many people who I I call them internet uh, civil rights leaders or internet gangsters. It's two groups of people. It's it's the internet civil rights leaders and the internet gangsters. You know, it's the internet. Well, we need to do this. We need to do that. And we need to do this. And then when you ask them, well, what are you organizing? What are you trying to do? They they don't respond. Or you'd be like, what's the solution to such and such? They don't respond. That's an internet civil rights leader. They throwing stuff out there. 
knowing that they're not even practicing it themselves, but they throwing it out here like they doing something. Second person is the That's internet right. gangster who gonna talk bad about you, who gonna hate on you, and and, and don't even know you, but they're gonna do that and because they don't have, for the better lack of words, the cojones to confront you That's themselves right. and say, hey, this is what I think about you. Tell me why I'm wrong. I think this about you. Cause see, my thing is this, if you don't like me, you don't like me, but at least let me give you a reason not to like me. Because if you're not liking me because right. of what you perceive or what you think, why don't you confront me and ask me? And then after we had that confrontation, if you don't like me, you whatever, you whatever, but don't, don't dislike me if you don't even know nothing about me. That's right. And I totally agree with that. And I gotta say personally and in, in my own personal view, when I look at my own entire family and i'm talking about my family as a whole my immediate family as well as my extended family i see so many different views of things in my own family my thoughts is how how is my community going to ever come together to do anything that's going to help us out even it, with the it, things that easy. we're seeing around it, the world it, it, how it, we it's, it's, it's easy it, it's easy it's easy now let me show you something right you just brought up a great point because let me tell you what happens in black families all across this country every day. It is somebody in that family who's just like you and who's just like me, who we want to help. We want to, we want to be there. We want to do something to change something. It's one of them in every family. Almost all we got to do is connect with that one person in the other family. Because what's sad is when we bring it to our family, our family don't want to participate. We, we can bring it to them and they'd be like, ah, oh, I, I don't want to do that. But if they see somebody else doing it, then they'd be like, oh, let's do it. So what we have to do is I need to connect with you. You need to connect with the other person that's like us. And then that person needs to connect with the other person that's like us. And before we know it, we go from one to 10 to maybe 100. And then we do something and we show people that it actually worked. Now, look, I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. This co-op, right? It ain't going to be. 30 or 40,000 people to begin with when we start this off. But once we do one, everybody and their mama going to want to be a part of the next one. You, you ain't going to, you ain't even going to have to tell nobody. They, they, they going to be, man, when is the next one? When is the next? How do I get involved? How do I, cause see the thing I know about Negroes is this. It's two things I know about Negroes. If you show them that it'll work and they can make some money, them Negroes all over it. They all over it. That's when they read that's when they ready to spend money and everything else. If they see it works and they can make some money, they all over it. So you got to understand that this is this is, you know, we pushing the rock up the hill right now. And we've been pushing the rock up the hill, right. but if, but eventually it's going to be more than just one or two of us pushing this rock. And once we get more than one or two of us pushing this rock, eventually we're going to get it all the way up the hill. One, I think the only way that that's going to happen, what you talked about, is through God, period. I think that humans, especially us, we are just not capable of surpassing or getting past all the bad things that are happening to us right now. I think the only way... We, we, we've, done we, we've done it once. We've done it once. We've done it once. In our lifetime, at, we've done it. We're at. We, we, we've done, let, let me show you. Let me show you. I, I'm going to use the president. When he announced he was running for the White House, black people didn't think he could win the White House. You have very few black folks who really believed that he could win the White House. Now, let me just, this, this being completely honest here, I was the only one who had a nationally syndicated radio show who endorsed him right off the bat. All the rest of them Negroes didn't endorse him until after he won South Carolina. They didn't even do it after Iowa. They did it after South Carolina. Al, Al Sharpton didn't endorse him at all. He didn't endorse him at all in that first election. Go look for yourself. I'm not making this up. Jesse Jackson was talking about cutting his balls right. off. You remember that? Oh, I mean, so 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 you got you 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 gotta understand, you gotta understand that look, what seems impossible is very possible once we show him we can do it. And that's what happened with Barack. Once Barack oh. won Iowa, once he won Iowa, this is exactly what happened. Every Negro in America thought this man could not win, and then he won Iowa. And once he won Iowa, then the whole conversation changed because for the first time, Negroes start saying, well, wait a minute, white folks voted for him. And if they voted for him, 
maybe we should too. Cause see, every Negro in America was on on Clinton's team on when Barack was running against her in the beginning because everybody thought Bill Clinton was the greatest right. president in the world. So don't right. don't don't have despair, brother. But you write about one thing, whether it's the co-op, whether it's something else, something's gonna change, and it's gonna be of God. It's not gonna be of man because see, even even this co-op thing, this ain't of me. This is of God. This is his. This is, I'm just trying to organize it. That's all I'm trying to do. Right. So, so, so whatever, whatever becomes, whatever happens, it will be of God. Just like Barack's campaign was because God wanted Barack in that White House at some point. Whether he was put there by the powers that be on earth or whether God just did it himself without using them other people. He was put there because God, it was his time to be there. Just like we are going to have a time of coming together and changing again. I, I promise you that. I promise you that. Hey, brother, right. thank you for the call, man. 888-669-2281. 888-669-2281 is the number to call. You want to weigh in on what we're talking about? How? How? Am I looking at this organ thing wrong? Am I looking at the shooting of the kids wrong? Looking at Trump wrong? I want to hear from you. 888-669-2281. It's more Valentine's show.